right? Interesting. So I'm, I'm curious, like, I, I think we're going to be going back a bit, but on fresh pay. So my interpretation of it from what you said is it's a bundle of payment options that you're going to get, right? Um, mm-hmm. Fresh in the box or uh, fresh ideas is not necessarily reinventing the wheel here. They're just saying, look, payments in Zim is, is a jungle at best. Yep. Getting yeah. facilities is a mess at best. You need like six, seven other people to, to tell you what to do and what that. So is my reading of it correct when I say, you guys are basically saying, we've got all these things in one bundle and you might not have to be part of, you know, the, the, the e-commerce platform, but you can still get the bundle of payment options if you're going to operate remotely or is that exclusive just to come to the e-commerce platform? Um, look, when, 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 when FreshPay is finished, I mean, it will be available to anybody to just turn on and off what they want. Um, and the thing is, when you, when you try and... When you try and get payments from the diaspora right now in Zimbabwe, mm. it's almost impossible unless you have friends overseas who can help you with Stripe accounts and PayPal accounts, etc. You understand? Mm. So it's almost like what we're saying is that we, we want to be able to give you, just like Shopify, an option to choose which payment platform you want to use. If you go to PayNow, Dot code is a dub. You can open an account, and that. And if you choose them as your payment provider, we're happy to pass you on to them seamlessly on your e-commerce platform. And and you know, when I KP are working on great plugins for WordPress, and like I said, we're eight months out from getting it done properly. But when it's done properly, it's going to be making it easier for people to be able to to implement and receive money quickly in them. But we're hoping that you know. We're hoping that things get easier with time. We really hoped that, you know, Zip it Instant was going to change how we thought that we would get some sort of APIs and stuff. But guess what? They fudged that too. Mm. So it's, they haven't made it any easier for Zip it to go online. You know what I mean? Mm. So, so what we're saying is that the best way for you to get payments online is to register with one of the payment providers that exist. And we will then take your credentials and we'll make it easy for you to be able to accept payments on our site. It's just about the handshake, you know, making sure that we can mark a product as paid or payment failed or payment rejected, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, your settlements and everything else will be done by the payment provider. Mm. And I think it will be a while before we agree to start doing that kind of thing, trying to accept payments and make settlements and so forth. Because we don't want to be vetting customers. We don't want to be, getting your CR14s and all that type of stuff. I think that's where we let's, let's allow those who have dedicated themselves in that space to do that. All right, cool. So here's my thing. So with, with this solution, right, on face value, people see the price first, right? And they're like, hey, 99 bucks. And you know, Zimbabweans, when it comes to mm-hmm. shelling out money, on it, you know what they, they yep. it, it, it's a problem. So, People in this respect might still go the developer route and say, you know, not like I'm going to need to, you know, it's probably cheaper for working out like that. What do you have to say to those people? Um, saying, seeing as okay, you guys are passing on your experience in the in the in the field for the for the I think five or four five years you've been in the business. What yeah. do you say to those people who say, listen, my route is my route. I'll do things next. Um, it's taken us three years and eight developers to get to where we are now. And I, I can hand on heart to tell you that it's cost us not under 40,000 US dollars to get where we are in this current iteration. Um, and that's just cost. This is not cost to company. This is just like on the face value cost. So if someone thinks it's easier to develop a site like this from scratch, they're going to they're gonna be in for a rude awakening. It's, it's the same rude awakening I went through. Um, the tech becomes the most expensive thing that you're doing. Now, when, when the reason why we put the $99 price is because we thought, you know what? We will take care of Angolia Place. We'll take care of Cloudinary. We'll take care of your SMSs. We'll take care of your email. We'll take care of your hosting. We'll take care of your online security. We'll take care of your updates. We'll take care of everything. All you have to do is be able to upload a JPEG, put it in a description and a price and receive your money. I mean, 
We've literally taken away all the headaches that comes with owning a fully functional site. And that's not if you're not going the whole palmer shop. Mm. Now, this is what I'm saying. I want to develop something from scratch. Now, <clears throat> just Cloudinary Pro alone is $99, right? Mm. That's how much it costs a month. <clears throat> um, you know, if you if you look at Digital Ocean, you might end up paying $60, $70. Um, if you if you if you try to if you if you look at um, you know some of the other services that you need to be able to, to run your site properly, you you end up paying thousands of dollars. Now what we're saying is let's all get together and pay less. It's almost like we're trying to it's sort of like socialism. We're trying to say if we all pay a little bit, we can have the best system running, robust, world standard, and not. And I believe that the more people that come on the platform, the cheaper we can actually make it. I mean, the initial price I wanted to put it was at forty nine ninety nine, dollars um, uh, And I think that's when, you know, the, the council is like, look, that, that won't scale quickly enough as far as us being able to cover the cost. But, you know, I think if we, if we can surpass the 200, uh, 200 customers mark, we definitely think we can then start bringing down the price because then we start benefiting from economies of scale. Yeah, that's fantastic. Cheap, and cheap is expensive, guys. Cheap is expensive. <laughs> Look, if somebody, if somebody tells you guys right that they're running a vegetable delivery business, because there's a lot of guys who say they are, and then they tell you that they're using WhatsApp to get those deliveries, that person is not doing more than five deliveries a day, right? That person is because it's absolute, it's absolutely mind-boggling to try and run your business off WhatsApp and you actually have a high volume of deliveries. We discovered that very quickly. Um, if, if someone tells you that, oh no, I'm going to run my whole delivery business off a of WooCommerce hack, there's no developers developing for WooCommerce in Zimbabwe. There's too many problems that we faced when we tried to hack WooCommerce. It didn't work for us personally. It didn't work very well at all, right? So cheap is expensive. You end up troubleshooting, getting things that you don't want and don't need. Now, there's other great platforms like Equid, for example. Um, and I think a lot of people have, one of our customers left Equid to come to us because, again, the way that they were getting notifications about deliveries, they didn't have a live dashboard. They, you know, there's things that they just don't have. They don't have a driver app. They can't assign all these weird things, that little niggles that we've had to deal with and fix because we own the code. You can't do that with Equid. To get optimized routing on equity, you have to pay a fee. And eventually, once you get the, once you slash on the bundle for SMSs, once you slap on the bundle for getting multiple products, all the variants and extras and all that stuff, you're now paying $149 like Shopify. So what we're saying is, you know, if you want a great platform, that's got guys who are going to be watching it and looking at it all the time and fixing it for you and seeing how we can get better together. Um, then yeah, come to us. And I think we'll build it together properly. And this is not just Zimbabwe. And remember, like I said, this has been built so that it can work anywhere in the world because one of our largest um, customer base is in the diaspora. Mm. Yeah, and I like how you, you even mentioned that um, you would want it to be a ubiquitous platform. Um, so I was curious, how do you think your platform will change the e-commerce space in Zim. Like Fresh Ideas has basically made the platform the product. So do you think this will raise the bar? You know, my brother, I actually believe we have already changed the e-commerce platform in Zimbabwe. I mean, who knew that middle-aged uh, women in Bardell and Sentosa and Mudiriro were willing to shop online? Like, that was unheard of four years ago. It didn't exist, right? Now, right now, th that, is what, that is what is happening, right? There's, there's a large amount of people who could not operate anything other than WhatsApp who are now ordering online. Like, so Fresh in a Box has pioneered. And for, people like Spy have been trying for years, and it didn't work. Um, you know, some of those hacks that they were trying to do didn't work. They didn't operate pro properly. If you, if you go on some of these companies that say they do online shopping, 
and you try and complete a sale, you'll realize that they don't even, some of them don't even have payment options. That some of these sites are just up as a facade, as a joke, right? But Fresh in a Box is actually taking real money, delivering real food to people's homes. You know, Joe is actually taking orders, actually doing tracking, actually taking pizzas to people's houses, right? This is real stuff. So I, I believe that the ubiquity will come in the sense that if people get used to the simplicity of making a choice and being able to pay fast, it will force Zimbabweans to start thinking in that way. I dare you to try and use the Halstead site, for example. It's an absolute disaster, right? You, just to buy gumboots, and I'm a farmer, and it's locked down. I want to buy gumboots for my workers, and Halstead says you can shop online. It's a disaster. Why is that? Why can't it be simple, you know? And I think that's what we're trying to do is make things simpler. Um, and you know what? The people who don't like us the most are the developers who have been taking money from people for years. They, they really are not happy with our model currently. And I understand why. Um, you're starting to eat into people. <laughs> mm. um, yeah. But that's what happened in America. That's what happened everywhere else in the world. We, we need something. We need sometimes to disrupt the status quo to make things work for everybody. My business is about selling more online and I need more people selling online so that I can sell more online. It makes sense. 